Hey guys, what's going on? Thanks for swinging by. I really do appreciate it. If this is your first time with the channel, my name is Mark. Welcome to Fit and Fire. Let's get into this video. This time we're going to be talking about the Arsenal SLR 107R. And this is actually one of three new AKs that I will be talking about not only in this video, but in future videos as well. Uh, I've been able to pick up another um, AK-47 uh, that is, I think is kind of a little unique. And then I've been able to go and do a bucket list trip of a lifetime and build my very first AK. We'll be talking about that one in a future video. But we're going to be talking about this one first and foremost because this is quite possibly one of the best deals that I've ever been able to pick up on when purchasing a firearm. And that's my question to you guys. Sound off in the comment section down below. What has been the best deal that you've been able to pick up a firearm with, whether that be on a peer-to-peer -peer website, a great deal for like Black Friday from a manufacturer, maybe you bought something from a friend. Let me know, sound off in the comment section down below because we're gonna be talking about the awesome deal I got on this one at the end of the video once I do an overview of what's going on with this rifle. Okay, so let's jump right on into it. This is a Bulgarian imported rifle by Arsenal. So this is going to be um, built in Bulgaria, imported into the United States in Las Vegas where Arsenal is set up. And then they're going to put the final finishing final touches on this one as well. Uh, let's go ahead and talk about what do we got going on as far as this rifle is concerned and how it's set up. First and foremost, this is going to be a 16.25 inch chrome line cold hammer forge barrel with a 14 by one left-handed thread pitch muzzle. Uh, this particular one is going to have a two chamber Midwest Industries break. It came with it when I purchased this from a uh, private seller. Again, we'll talk about that here in just a second. Now, interesting thing about the barrel and how Arsenal sets this up, as you can see, it's got the 90 degree gas block and that's for a couple of different reasons. Number one is the SLR 107R, which is going to be this fixed stock version of this rifle, is technically going to be uh, a bit of a mashup between a couple of other different rifles that not only Arsenal builds, but also what the Bulgarians did as well. And this is kind of a interesting point about these imported rifles. Number one is Bulgaria went from the Type 3 AK-47 or the milled um, receiver AK-47 and then jumped right into the AK-74. And by doing so, that's where you're going to start seeing a lot of the 90 degree gas block setups. You're also going to have a little bit of a thinner profile barrel on the rifles as well because of the AK-74, not needing such a heavier barrel because of so much mass moving through it. Then in, in addition to that, Arsenal and the Bulgarians, basically, what they've done is they have set up a stamped receiver version of their SAM-7. Now the SAM-7 is a milled receiver AK-47, and what Arsenal and Bulgaria has done with these commercial setup, um, or at least these commercial rifles and how they've set them up, is the fact that they have put a one millimeter stamped receiver on this particular one and uh, have put everything else, especially from uh, this point on, exactly the same as the SAM-7. So just an interesting little take on how they have gone about setting this particular rifle up. And to be frankly honest with you, I, I really kind of like it that way. I like the 90 degree gas block. I like that, um, you know, newer AKM slash AK-103 slash AK-74 look to it. Um, and uh, in addition to that, with it being a 14 by one left-handed thread pitch um, muzzle on this or um, the threads here on the muzzle, that's going to actually open up a lot of aftermarket for different types of muzzle devices, whether that be this one here from Midwest Industries or something from JMAC Customs, so on and so forth. Not to say that you can't find 
muzzle devices for the 24 by 1.5 millimeter right-handed thread pitch, but you're, you're probably going to have more luck finding the standard AK 14 by one than you would the other. Uh, just my opinion. Uh, like I said, you can find both, but just kind of my opinion. Okay, so this is going to end up having the polymer furniture set on this. This is going to be US made polymer set and that is for 922R compliance. So when these are imported in, obviously they are blank rifles. They don't have any type of furniture on here, but um, naturally once they get into the United States, we have to have so many American made parts on the rifle to ensure that it's 922R compliant. So pretty standard, uh, very AK-74, AK-103 aesthetic look to this setup. And again, I like it. However, I will say that the hand guards and the buttstock will be getting changed out for some aftermarket stuff. And I'll talk about that in a later video. The uh, sights on this, your standard AK style sights, your front sight is going to be the U-shaped notch uh, open on the top, uh, just exactly what you would expect. On the rear, you're going to have 800 meter adjustable um, rear leaf sight. Now, what I will say is in zeroing this rifle, I did have to move this front sight to the left a little bit. So that would mean that there is the possibility of this barrel being canted just ever so slightly uh, to the right a little bit uh, when they press that in which is uh, why the front sight post is justified to the left a little bit. Um, not that big of a deal. It's not cranked way far in one direction, but uh, that's usually a good indicator that that may be an issue. At the end of the day, it's still shooting and running just fine. Okay, it's going to have the ribbed dust cover on this, and then on the other side, you're going to have your standard com block style uh, optics mount, that little bracket that's riveted onto the side of the receiver. I've got this Midwest Industry uh, mount on here with the primary arms, one power Cyclops. Really do like this setup. I really like the etched reticle in this optic. It just works really, really well. That combination works very, very well. And um, it's not magnified, so it's very easy for me to not only find my reticle, but also put that on uh, on the target, especially if I'm shooting very close distances, 25 yards and in. Uh, it's a very, very quick setup for me. One of the things that I have done is I have replaced your standard safety lever on this with a Krebs Custom safety lever, and I really, really do like it. I like having that ledge right here for my index finger, so I don't have to break my hand off of the pistol grip to swipe down. I can just use my index finger and right on. My, my uh, index finger ends up being right on that trigger as well. All right, so let's talk about the trigger here real quick. The uh, trigger on this is going to be an enhanced fire control group uh, according to what Arsenal says. And if you don't know, Arsenal is kind of uh, underneath a conglomerate corporation called FIME, F-I-M-E, FIME Group, and what they have done is they, they've taken the Vepper trigger and basically have copied it and made it their own. So this is going to be an enhanced, an enhanced fire control group that models the Vepper. So uh, let's talk a little about the trigger and its break. So if you guys can see right here, um, it's going to be kind of a standard AK trigger. There's going to be some mush at the very beginning, and then it's finally going to break over. I will say that this is going to be a lighter break than some of the other AKs that I have messed with, whether it be from Palmetto State Armory, the RH-10 that I've had, the Zestava, um, ZPAP, great rifle, but this is going to be a different feel to it, uh, a little bit lighter. Here's your reset all the way out, and then again, your mush, and then your break over. Uh, really, really nice. I probably could improve that. I've learned some tricks uh, from the Godfather himself, Jim Fuller. He's taught me some tricks on how to smooth some things up, so I may be looking into that as well.
All right, so let's talk about the uh, finish on this. It is going to be a military grade black paint that comes from the factory in Bulgaria. And that is pretty standard of what you would find on most Eastern Bloc or Russian uh, rifles. It's going to have a phosphate finish underneath the paint. So uh, there's, I would say, a little bit of a love-hate relationship when it comes to that because a lot of people really do like the, um, really do like the look of the black paint, but they've also noticed some bubble marks or it kind of wears down a little bit and then they start seeing the gray phosphate finish underneath and they think it's bare metal. It's not, it'll be just fine uh, to protect it from rust and corrosion. But uh, I will say that the paint will wear off if you use certain types of solvents. So just keep that in mind as well. One of the other interesting characteristics of this rifle is on the bolt. This is not going to have a free floating fire pin. It's actually going to have a spring that is encapsulating that fire pin so that as the hammer comes down, that spring adds some additional uh, resistance into that uh, firing pin and is supposed to help um, defeat a lot of harder primers from what I understand. Uh, I've also heard that sometimes that spring will break and if it does, just go in, pull that apart, take that spring out and it should just, it should run just like a normal AK but I haven't uh, looked into that. I haven't tested that. Um, and to be frankly honest with you, I probably won't look into that. <laughs> it's just one of those things I just don't even really care about, uh, to be honest with you. But needless to say, that is a little bit of a difference when it comes to the arsenals opposed to a, you know, a WBP Fox or a, um, a Cougar Walser. RH-10, or even if you've been lucky to find a, a Sega, um, those usually don't have that. Okay, so let's talk about uh, the mag fitment here real quick. Uh, first and foremost, I've got a Bakelite. This is a uh, Ukrainian window battlefield pickup Bakelite, and uh, it fits in there really nice. Fairly tight, but uh, not difficult to insert into the rifle. There's no wiggle in it whatsoever. So that's really, really good. Uh, one of the more popular ones here recently are the US Palm Polymer uh, AK mags. And uh, I haven't run these quite yet. I just ended up with one of these. Uh, I can't remember how I ended up with it, but needless to say, here it is and the fit. Uh, also real tight, no wiggle whatsoever, but it fits in nice and easy. And uh, yeah, it doesn't get hung up on there at all. This is a uh, KCI mag, um, so a Korean uh, new production mag. And uh, I actually really like these. I've ran these in a carving course and I've been running them for most of the AKs uh, that I you know, take out to the range to review for you guys. And these fit really, really well. It does go in, gonna have a little bit of a wiggle there but uh, no issues and uh, with it being a little bit looser it's going to get in and out a little bit easier as well and then finally i have a, a hungarian um milsurp mag here and this one is really really tight you can hear not a very loud click when it engages the uh, mag release just kind of it's kind of in there it's really tight so if you're going to run this mag on this rifle, I would say that you would want to uh, maybe file down the lugs a little bit. Uh, but needless to say, I've got plenty of other mags that I would normally run with this. All right, so I wanted to uh, talk to you guys real quick about the deal that I was able to get on this. And I'll try to keep it as brief as possible. And the reason why I'm even talking about it is because it's one of those things where you can actually still find really, really good deals out there, even though a lot of people have panic bought and people are uh, really trying to you know, hold on to as much as possible. There are still people out there who are selling things and are doing it at a reasonable cost. So I was looking for the 107 FR, which is the folding stock version, and there was two listings. One was for the FR, and the guy wanted $29.95 for it. And I'm just like, there is no way I'm paying $3,000 to 
get the rifle that I want. I'm just not going to do that. That's absolutely ridiculous. The next one was this one, and it was the standard stock. It wasn't folding, and I was like, you know, to be honest with you, I think I can live without the folding stock version. Um, it's not necessarily what I want, but at the very least, it gets me close enough. And so I reached out to the guy and I says, hey, is this steel available? And he said, yeah, still is. And I we talked back and forth a little bit and we agreed to meet um, that following Saturday morning. Now I was fully expecting to this for this guy to flake out on me or it to be a scam or something like that. And it wasn't, the guy was there. He got there actually a few minutes before I did um, to show him that I was interested in this rifle and how much I was interested in this rifle. I told him that I would be actually interested in purchasing the rifle for more than he was asking. The asking cost on this was $1,200. And for this rifle in this day and age, that's actually pretty good pretty good i wouldn't say as good as it was about 12 months ago but as it stands right now if you're wanting a good ak like this that's probably what you're going to be spending if not a lot more so i told him it's like hey you know i would be interested in buying this maybe for th up to 1300 dollars, depending on how good it looks when i actually get my hands on it and he said yeah we can do that we can do that now, obviously he's not going to uh shy away from more money right Showed up, he was there, I was happy to see that he was there, and uh, took one look at it and I said, it's sold, I'll buy it. Uh, I asked him how many rounds that he had put through it, he said about 200, and looking at the bolt carrier group tail, or the carrier tail, I could see that uh, this was this was about 200 rounds put through it. Not much deformation on that carrier tail, so um, looked good, looked good. There's no scratches on this whatsoever. Uh, everything looked really, really nice. So I said, yep, yeah, sold. Here's 1300 bucks for you, just to show you that I, I mean what I say, and uh, thank you so much for meeting me halfway. And he was like, oh man, thanks so much. I really do appreciate that. But here's where it gets interesting. I take this and I put it in a uh, gun case that I had brought with me, just a soft shell gun case that I brought with me. Uh, so if I had to stop anywhere, I could kind of hide it in, in my truck so people couldn't see it. And um, he turns around and says, oh, by the way, here's a Midwest Industries optics mount that I have for it. And I was like, oh, cool, I can always use one of those. And it's one of the longer versions, so I can put my LPVO on it. I have a Primary Arms 1-6 to Raptor that I really like. And I was like, cool, thanks, that's, that's really awesome. Added bonus. Then he turns around, <laughs> he reaches in his truck again, he says, here's the optic that goes with it. That was an Athlon BTR Midas one to four. Now, like I said, I like the primary arms one to six, so I had no use for that. I've already sold that and made $120 back from the purchase of this rifle. And I was like, oh man, thanks so much. That's That means a lot. And then I put this into the truck and this is where it gets even wilder. <laughs> he reaches into his truck a third time, pulls a box out and says, here you go, here's uh, all the ammo that I have for it. And it's a thousand rounds of 7.62 by 39. And I was just blown away. Now, I already was going to buy a thousand rounds of 7.62 by 39 because I was prepping for a, um, a carbine course and I needed their ammo anyway. So if you deduct the ammo off of the cost of this rifle, the mount and the optic, you're looking at about $700 for this rifle right here. And I was blown away. I really, really was blown away at that fact that I was able to pick this up for so cheap. So because of that, uh, I have decided to go ahead and upgrade the uh, the hand guards here. And I've already upgraded the, the um, safety lever. And then I'm gonna upgrade the stock as well. I'm not sure if I'm gonna do anything with the pistol grip as of yet, but uh, needless to say, this is going to be a fun project and I can't wait to see what happens with it moving forward. But that's my question to you guys. 
For you AK lovers out there, what are some of the upgrades that you have done for your AK? Which AK is your favorite? Are you a 47 guy? Are you a 74 guy? Sound off in the comment section down below. I would love to hear what you guys have to say. With that being said, I really do appreciate you guys swinging by Patreon crew. You guys are really crushing uh, all the support financially. I really do appreciate it. And uh, a lot of the content you guys see on this channel is because of my Patreon members. So if you're interested, tons of links down in the description below for you guys to check out. Please check it out and see what you uh, can do to support the channel. Biggest way to do that is by sharing this video. So if you think that I've earned it, go ahead and click that subscribe button and share this video as well. I would really appreciate that. As always, thanks for swinging by. We're gonna go ahead and get out of here. Here comes a high five, freedom through strength. Take care y'all, bye.